we doing, guys? This is how you model a uh, arm piece for a bee. This is the professional way to make patterns. I saw it on the internet. Our project was based off of an online comic by Tom Sedell called Gunner Creek Court. Our pitch was to take the admin bot character and bring him into the real world. Oh, hello. You're looking for someone, aren't you? Let me guess. He had tiny little wings on his back. That's S13. He's at the end of the corridor there. He was returned to us some weeks ago. Darn fool left the facility grounds. I can open the door for you. Oh, hello. You're looking for someone, aren't you? Let me guess. He had tiny little wings on his back. That's S13. He's at the end of the corridor there. He was returned to us some weeks ago. Darn fool left the facility grounds. I can open the door for you. Oh, hello. You're looking for someone, aren't you? Let me guess. He had tiny little wings on his back. That's S13. He's at the end of the corridor there. He was returned to us some weeks ago. Darn fool left the facility grounds. I can open the door for you. Our first step after the pitch was to combine all of our ideas together and visualize what we wanted the project to be. We then mocked up a miniature maquette of our effect using wire and foam and saw the admin bot in the physical world for the first time. On top of the miniature, we also figured out a way to make the hands on our effect functional. Our first prototype utilized the 3D printers in the foundry to create a working hand from a model we had found on Thingiverse made by Gyrobot. The hand was able to move thanks to the joints being printed in NinjaFlex and the fingers each being pulled down by their own string. We printed it at a lower quality due to the time constraints. The forearm we attached the hand to was made by wrapping my arm in paper and transferring the shape we got from that to chipboard and cutting it out. The robot's biceps were created using a similar process of wrapping, tracing, and cutting paper and then chipboard to the desired shape. We decided to create all the necessary parts to make the arms, but not assemble them this week due to time constraints. After debating whether the effect should be more of a costume or more of a puppet, we settled on having the effect controlled by rods attached to the robot's body and head. We laminated together three layers of insulation foam using spray adhesive to make the main shape of the body. The head was carefully carved from bits of foam similar to the body since it was important to us that we stayed true to the source material. We used a hot wire and we very carefully rounded his edges and tapered his body to look just like the comic. We used Alex Flex to cover the entire robot so we could replicate the smooth finish that AdminBot has in the comics. The finish was far from smooth when we applied it, so it took a ridiculous amount of time and effort to sand the body smooth to get it ready for paint. Speaking of paint, we mixed up a one-of-a-kind AdminBot blue color to apply to the head and body that matched the comic almost perfectly. We needed to get another arm on our project, so we printed up the left hand and fingers at a higher print quality so we wouldn't run into the same issues we did when printing the right hand. We worked late into the night painting, assembling, tweaking, and filming screen tests of our project the night before James Gurney came to visit, and luckily, all our hard work paid off. <laughs> it really seemed like James Gurney loved our project, even after his arm had a fatal failure right in front of him. It was important that we match the curves and smooth finish of the desk that is shown in the comics, so we cut and taped several pieces of cardboard together to get an idea of what we were working with. We knew we wanted the desk to light up using LED tape, but none of us had formal electronic knowledge. After a couple hours of fiddling with connections and drawing a bootleg wire diagram, we settled on a design that would work with our desk. Alex rooted up a switch so that the button the robot presses in the effect could turn from cyan to red and back again. In order to replicate the clean lines and details present on the desk in the comics, we created vector files of the buttons on the desk in lettering and printed them out on giant sheets of vellum. We woke up bright and early on the day of filming to load our effect into the box truck and head to the soundstage. While our Professor J.E. drove the box truck, the team loaded into the bus and rode all the way across campus and started unloading. We then carefully unloaded our project and started setting up everything to be camera ready. Getting the right amount of elevation of the desk and the robot itself was key in making the effect look believable. Throughout the filming process, things slowly started to break and arms started to fall off, but the beauty of movie magic is that in the final product, you'll never even be able to tell.